classes. All right, so this is lab today. We are going to go through. Okay, we're going to go through the chapter one material. All right. This should all be reviewed, right? Okay, so as you go through the lab manual, anything that's a bolded word, anything that's in a box is potentially a word you're going to have to identify in some type of question, identify with some type of pointing to the model and saying, ID this or what is this, what is that? Okay, so if you're making flashcards for lab, you would then want to pick out those bolded terms or those terms in the box. Okay, so most of the ones here, anatomy versus gross anatomy versus microscopic anatomy, anatomical position. So remember, what did I say anatomical position is? The human standing, palms forward, thumb is out, pinky is in. Big toe is medial, pinky toe, lateral. That's important, right? Because when we supinate and pronate, your thumb can turn if you go palms back, all right? But this is where we want to be. And then when we're in this position, especially for like the radius and the ulna and the nerves, then they are almost always referred to as like the more lateral, the medial nerve because of anatom where they are in anatomical position. Okay? And again, you, you usually will get told, told, that the patient is in a supine or the patient's in a prone position and then like when you're given notes to follow uh give them an injection in the butt so make sure they're in the prone position don't try to stick the needle between the sheath and your hand up their backside you know i mean you think it's common sense <laughs> i was in the military so you think it's common sense <laughs> but then it's amazing what people are like huh okay all right, so again, our directional terms. Anterior is the best way when we talk about humans, but when we study things for human use, we sometimes study in animal models, and in animal models, their anatomical position is on all fours. When you cut through that coronal or that frontal plane, you are called, you're doing anti, uh, ventral and dorsal. So, anterior and ventral can, for the most part, be used interchangeably, okay? When you have the opportunity, you would pref prefer for humans to try to say anterior, but when you're referring to maybe things that we've only studied or only really well characterized in animal models, you might see that the ventral as part of the name is sticking because every time we poke and prod it, it's in an animal model. Okay. Same thing with posterior dorsal. All right. Superior, inferior, cranial, cephalic, so neck or, neck or head, caudal. Remember, those are going to be very, very key whenever we're talking about everything from the main axis of the body. So the crown of the head to the pelvic floor the coccyx bone, the end of the spinal cord, or the spine, uh, vertebral, that vertebral column. Okay, so anything related to that axial skeleton, we're going to try to go, it's more towards the cranial, cephalic, or superior, caudal, inferior. Okay, again, Mr. Arms here and Mr. Legs. They are part of the end appendix. I'm like, no, not appendix. Appendicular skeleton, your appendages, right? And your appendages, again, you can come across victims and they're all kind of twisty and twirly, okay? So we are going to use distal and proximal because those directional terms always hold true no matter what position the body's in. Proximal mean more proximity to the core center, distal more distance. OK, 
Okay, superficial and deep. Again, we normally think of like a superficial wound, a flesh wound versus a deep wound where you can go septic and, you know, die. All right. So superficial means more towards the surface, deep more towards the inner layer. Okay, and then right and left, when we cut on that sagittal plane, we usually create a right and a left. And again, the heart's a good example because not every cut is mid sagittal. Many of the cuts to say I have a right kidney and a left kidney are because I cut mid sagittal. I have a right brain, I have a left brain, mid sagittal. I have a right eye and a left eye, mid sagittal. But the heart, you did not cut on midline, you cut sagittally. Okay, so I like to use the heart as always my example because it gets you out of thinking mid sagittal, mid sagittal, you know, and only mid sagittal. Sagittal. There's only one cut that's mid, but any other cuts, you would be sagittal cuts, creating a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. And then when you are again on the appendicular skeleton, the right hand, I don't want to be like the right, right finger of the right hand or the right, right bone of the right hand, you know, or the right, right ligament of the elbow. That'll get very confusing. Which is it that comes first, the side or the the side of the body or the side of the joint, you know? So that's why we do medial and lateral on arms and legs to help us again, when I'm in anatomical position, know that the radius and the humerus here, right? That should be my lateral connection or part of the joint. And then this with the ulna and the humerus would be the medial. Okay, I got some tendonitis. My tendonitis is right here because I have like tennis elbow. I tried to take up tennis last year. By June, I had tendonitis. <laughs> it's now almost February and I still have the freaking tendonitis. So, where is it? It's out here on this lateral area. Okay. So, when they always are writing the notes, it's lateral elbow pain to make sure it's known it's over here. All right, again, our plane. So you cut off someone's head, so the guillotine is going to cut through the transverse plane. Cut through, again, the diaphragm, separating the ventral cavity into thoracic, abdominal, pelvic, transverse plane. That transverse plane. Okay, so if the heart, I was studying the heart and I wanted to dissect it in transverse cuts, I would be cutting the atrias off and then I'd be cutting, you know, slicing in the ventricles, right? Okay, same thing with the lungs. I would be cutting in transverse plane, I would be cutting like the superior lobe, then the middle lobe, then the inferior lobe and in slices. Okay, so your transverse cuts are gonna again create like this segment, this piece of tissue is superior versus inferior to the, where the cut was, okay? All right, wearing a crown, everybody's seen beauty pageants, right? Crown goes up here so it can be as high as possible, right? To show how special they are. When you slice it down, you create anterior, posterior, or you can use ventral and dorsal, okay? What do some people want? Not their nose to be so pointy. So how are they gonna shave that nose? Through coronal or frontal plane cuts. And then if they do too much, they look like Voldemort, right? <laughs> Didn't he have like no nose? If I remember that correctly. There's always that picture, like they cut right, right um, here where like the eyeballs, it always freaks me out. I don't know, it just seems like, the eyeballs in front, you know. But if you cut down to get to the sinus here or the sinus here, then you're cutting through the frontal or the coronal plane. If you want to take a few inches off my backside, 
So my butt doesn't stick out as much. Again, I want to be cutting through the frontal or the coronal plane. Okay. All right, then last one, we already went through the sagittal. Okay. So you saw on the quiz that you have to know these regions. And again, I will try to make sure that if I use them for relationship or distance, you know, directional questions, they're at least on the same side of the body. There's an anterior or the posterior, All right? Remember anything that's on the axial part of the body, you want to try to, again, well, um, use the correct directional terms versus if it's on the appendicular. All right. You are going to see this again on potentially one of these guys. I might just put some stickies and say identify indicated um, anatomical landmarks. So if I put it on his forehead, what anatomical landmark is that? Frontal, right? If I put it on his shoulder, what is it? Chromial? getting there right okay I put it on his lower back lumbar all right so I could potentially use any of these torso models if you're on the online test I might use a picture or I might just put a sticky on here and be like take a picture and hey hope you can see it which numbers which okay you mostly can all right the other place to do it is on these models. Now, they're a little smaller. So if I put the sticky up here, you potentially could tell me it's his finger. So what are his fingers called? Digits. Digits. The back of his hand. Back of the hand. Do they have the back of a hand? No. All right. So if palm would be maybe one, uh, because his thumb's right there, I would probably accept Pollock. So sometimes. It might be that maybe there's two or three things that it could be, depending upon how the model presents it. Okay? So, if you wanted to do a fun activity today, or if you go to the library tomorrow or this weekend or later in the week, little tape, little Sharpie, or some people like to get those little like sticky notes that, right? Practice writing out the landmark and then put them on. If you don't have a model, you have children, just tape them up. <laughs> have fun game with your significant other, tape them up, All right? You can use like masking tape or like freezer tape that doesn't stick as well, okay? And try to, Try to, so I would usually do that thing where I would start here and I would just work my way down and I would kind of memorize it exactly how it was in the book. So all the ones that were on the right side, I label, you know, try to avoid that. Try to get it like even do the thing where you make a little bunch of slips and then match them on. Okay, until you get them down, just try to play the matching game that after you know where they are, Get rid of them, give yourself blank slips, and try to make sure you hit everyone from memory without the word being given to you in front of you. Again, randomize it, start in a different place, and do them out of order so that way you don't fall into a pattern where if you don't do it in this certain way, you can't remember which one it is. Okay, and you don't get as flustered. Does that make sense? So again, today, when we're done, this is one of those activities I can make you do. You can stay, practice taping him up. Rule of thumb, if you put tape on it, what do you do when you're done? Take it off. If you take a model down, where do you put it? Back. So when you leave this room, nothing should be on the tables except the Clorox wipes. All the models should be returned to where they belong. I say this because next week, where's stuff going to be? Okay, and it, my, it drives my OCD crazy, especially like the arms and legs. They're all like right along that back wall right now. Literally, they will be all over the place. And I will have to 
put them all away. <laughs> and the models, I'm a little bit better now, but like it really drives me nuts that there's no heart in that thing. It really drives me nuts that like they're missing some of their organ pieces. Okay, so if you take them out and, and I have to be better at this because not all of them fit back really well, but if the pieces don't fit, at least come put them in the bin and put the model away. Okay. Because if you come in here and you want to find something and it's not where it's supposed to be, it's going to drive you nuts. So it drives me nuts 20 times worse. All right, so you will see this on the lecture test as those matchings. Now, I gave you A, B, C, D last time, so I was easy on you. Next time it's going to be like A through N, okay? So you'll have to like really know them. And if you really know them, it's going to take you like two seconds to be like, doo, 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 doo. If you don't know them, you're going to find like five or six of them. And you're going to be like these five and these five. Okay, so you do want to make sure you learn all of them. these are easy things. This is the straight memorization. It's on the lab test. It is on the lecture test. So if you don't memorize them, you're only putting yourself at risk of not doing well. Okay. All right, our body cavities. Okay, so for ooh, my friend, Mr. Model, I can take his brain out. Where is this brain sitting? In the cranial cavity. His brain technically connects into the spinal cord running through the ver uh, vertebral, vertebral canal or the spinal cavity. Collectively, these two organs are part of your dorsal cavities. All right. You already saw one of the questions I'm going to ask you. So something like this organ, this guy, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, so you want, you want to kind of get familiar with these, what these organs are. So what organ is this? This is a stomach. What is this? This is a lung. What's this? Trachea. What's this thing? Esophagus. This is the aorta, right? So if I gave you these things, which specific cavity could all of these reside within? The thoracic. Okay, all right. Then you have the liver. Eh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this little liver. Then small and large intestines models kind of come together. Okay, so the small is the like garden hose in the middle. That's a hot mess of string. The large intestines, and you can kind of see right there's the appendix, right? Here's the cecum where it like initially the dumping ground. And then it's ascend, transverse, descend. It's got to get to midline, so it makes a little S, so sigmoid. Then it's the rectum. And then the anus is the outer opening. Okay? So, again, this, what cavity are the, the small and the large intestines, what cavity do they belong to? Abdominal, Abdominal pelvic. What organ system? Digestive. Okay. All right. Um, this guy doesn't have any reproductive organs, but again, think about where that iliac crest and draw that imaginary line, everything encased in your pelvic bone would be considered the pelvic cavity. And again, it's an imaginary line because there's nothing that's really a good like transverse running landmark. Okay. All right. So know the organs. So that could be a fun activity. Take this guy apart. Make sure you know all the organs, what organ system they belong to, what cavity they might be in. Okay. So you can get familiar with Mr. Torso. Okay. Usually putting him back together, the best way is to lie him in his lap. His brains fall. And then very carefully, you like bring him back over. So, by doing Mr. Torso, 
You get through the body cavities. You get through all the major organs and you should be able to get through all the organ systems. Okay. Now, you, re you identified this correctly as a lung. So like we did in the quiz today, if I have a sticky on here and I say, what membrane is the sticky potentially touching? Visceral pleural membrane. What cavity would be created around this organ? Pleural cavity. What membrane would line the cavity around this organ? Parietal pleural membrane. Okay, if it's the stomach or Mr. Liver or Mr. Small and large intestines, the sticky's on them and it says what membrane is touching these organs? Visceral peritoneal membrane. What cavity is created around? All right, and again, you got to think of the cavity. It's not like one big cavity. Like the cavity wraps around. If I was to unwind the whole tube, the cavities around every segment of the loop, and then I just like take the garden hose and like squish it together. Okay, so around every segment, every piece of the tube, what is the cavity around here? The peritoneal cavity and the peritoneal cavity. If stuff is trying to go up while stuff is trying to mix here, are these mixing and moving of this part of the large intestines and this part of the small intestines going to impede each other? No, and the reason why is because both have a peritoneal cavity around them that lets them kind of move and shake without. Friction and catching and messing the other segments up. Okay. Clear as mud right now. Okay. All right, there should be these um, at least one torso model in the library. If again, you're like, I really don't want to do this in public. I want to do this by myself. You can do that. Okay. So again, we went through our nine abdominal quadrants. Since all the things fall out of the bellies, this guy is pretty good at putting stickies on to try to say which, where, which of the nine abdominal quadrants is the sticky most, I have to be like, most likely on, you know, because the sticky might be a little big, but most of it is on if it's right over the belly button, the umbilical, down below the pubic, up a little above it, you know, so. So make sure you're comfortable, again, drawing that tic-tac-toe board, filling in the names, and then working through your directional terms. The quadrants to me are a little easy, so I usually don't mess with them as much. All right, again, here are your organ systems. So every one of these bolded terms, every one of these organs, you want to maybe find and know what it looks like, so there's no surprises of, what's that? So like on this guy, Okay, typically, I don't see them in here. Okay, typically the spleen, I can't, I'm a, I can't pick it up and do both, but the spleen is over here to the left and it's usually the, the pancreas kind of merges and, and the spleen is like this purple thing on the end. Okay, so you kind of want to make sure you know what all the organs are. All right, and then we'll start the histology next week. All right, questions. Okay, so your marching orders. If it's your table, you want to call it a day. Before you leave, make sure you have at least one person that you don't know or who's now your new best friend. You have their phone number or you have some way that you could airdrop pictures or email each other. Make sure you have a friend who you can now, if not your whole table, that you can now, you know, share stuff with, okay? Second thing, if you want to stay, there is some tape. There's models. You know the words. You can start practicing and going through them. Then you can take a picture of it with your camera and then 
you have a little study tool if you want to blow it up and create it different ways or create a little quiz for yourself and then go home and try to answer it or partner up you create a little quiz and i'll create a little quiz and we'll share with each other or something okay so you only get access to this room on mondays and you get access to this room if you want to come on wednesdays otherwise most of the time the door is locked or there's classes in here while there are some models like these in the library depending upon when you go whether the library is open now i don't even know sometimes or depending upon if the kinesiology or some other people are using that model you know you might not be able to always get your hands on it or they might not have it it walked away those things walk away sometimes okay you all know how that works right so make sure you use your time all right now i get we've been going from noon to uh we we only gone what in uh, 30 minutes i haven't talked for more than 30 minutes yay so you guys whether or not you want to stay here another hour and 20 minutes is up to you okay i will not force anyone to stay but i am here if you have questions all right any questions from the peanut gallery okay i'm gonna stop the recording <laughs>